Uh, my name is Daniel Stewart and I am a research fellow from the School of Chemistry at the University of Southampton. I received my master's degree in chemistry from Southampton in 2015 and completed my PhD this year. It was from this PhD that our Viridi CO2 technology was conceived, which strives to provide bespoke catalytic solutions for sustainable polymer manufacture using carbon dioxide. My PhD was motivated by the lack of technologies capable of utilising CO2 as a viable synthetic feedstock, despite its low price and huge abundance. One method to address this is to tackle the production of polyurethanes. 30 million tonnes of polyurethanes are produced globally every year, yet they remain scarcely recyclable. They find use across many commercial sectors, and the industry is set to grow to $70 billion by 2022. Unfortunately, Polyurethanes are derived solely from fossil fuels and are single use. One way to improve the sustainability of these materials is to derive the starting materials, in this case, the polyol, from carbon dioxide. This produces similar polyols with carbonate linkages that allow the polymer to be more easily broken down at the end of its life, providing a way to recycle the monomers and introduce a circular economy. For context, if we perform, perform this change on all of the polyurethanes in the world, it's been reported to lead to a 20% reduction in emissions and fossil fuel reliance. Furthermore, this is a carbon dioxide utilisation technology, not a storage strategy, which provides only a finite solution. Unfortunately, there is a problem with this process. There exist few catalysts capable of this transformation. Routes using phosgene and diols are highly toxic. Homogeneous catalysts require synthetically demanding and costly processes to remove the catalyst from the polymer. And of the few heterogeneous examples available, all require forcing conditions with really high pressures, temperatures and lengthy reaction times. Additionally, in all cases, the catalyst is not easily reusable. To address these failings, we've developed and have filed patent protection for our Viridi CO2 catalysts. This is a heterogeneous platform capable of transforming carbon dioxide under milder conditions than any other previously reported technology. Our platform has been designed using fundamental understanding of chemistry at the molecular level, discovered through my PhD. We've designed these catalysts to have both Bronsted and Lewis acid surface sites, as shown by the purple and the blue atoms. The population of these sites is critical to the performance, as they each absorb carbon dioxide or cyclic monomers, activating them and bringing them into proximity to allow for effective copolymerization. The amount of CO2 that these copolymers can contain can be varied by changing the metal within these sites, which determines their strength. This provides a versatile catalyst capable of producing multiple polymer feedstocks, such as polyethers or polyesters, and we've demonstrated this to TRL level 4. Compared to other heterogeneous catalysts, our Viridi CO2 platform provides superior activity under milder conditions. It is capable of maximum CO2 insertion under lower temperatures, pressures and dramatically reduced timeframes. These benefits provide superior energy efficiency and high productivity, leading to reduced costs. Further, unlike all other catalysts, the catalyst can be reused and can be synthesized in minutes. So having described the technology, the big question remains, is there actually a market? Thankfully, the answer is yes. Through the Set Squared iCure scheme, which I started in August, we've been able to assess the market and gain industrial insight. Currently, there's only one big player in the market, and that's Covestro, who this month announced the first example of mattresses produced using CO2-derived polymers. Now, you might think that we've been beaten to the post here, but actually, having spoken with industry, we know they're using an inferior catalyst, and the competitors are seeking innovative solutions. This gives us market opportunity. Even a very small penetration into this industry is worth millions. Furthermore, and most importantly, without carbon dioxide utilization technology, we're not going to achieve net 50, uh, sorry, net zero by 2050. So to get ourselves into a commercially viable position, we have set out a series of milestones within our business plan. Right now, we're here at the RSC Emerging Tech Competitions, and we're going to be completing the iCure program and continue to research using EPSRC funding. It's important that we don't go to market too early without being ready. At milestone one, we will have matured our IP portfolio and spun out. To support us early on, we're going to apply for Innovate UK and local enterprise program funding. At milestone two, we will have implemented a licensing model, licensing our IP to small polymer and catalyst manufacturers or process designers to begin a revenue stream. 
We will look to partner with SMEs to overcome initial barriers to entry, such as infrastructure requirements. Beyond Milestone 2, it's difficult to say what our business plan is going to look like. However, we do know that we will be targeting multinational companies with our ultimate dream of being able to retrofit our technology to the output streams of petrochemical refineries in order to close the carbon loop. Although we are at the pre-spin-out stage, we already have vast experience within our team. Robert Raja is Professor of Materials Chemistry and Catalysis here at Southampton. Together, we are the inventors of this technology, and we share over 30 years' experience in the development of sustainable catalytic solutions. Chris Spackman is our expert business advisor, who shares experience from a successful 30-year career and several years of mentoring startups, notably through the Future World's Entrepreneurial Hub at Southampton. And Paul Wilkinson is our expert technology transfer officer. Paul has been responsible for the successful commercialization of other ventures from the university, such as Curve Therapeutics. As we move on, however, we recognize the need to bring in further expertise, particularly an industrial advisor and an R&D manager. With that, I'd like to thank the RSC and the judges for the opportunity to present at this prestigious event. Thank you for your attention.